Welcome to the Divine Paradigm Symposium, revealing universal pathways to joyful living. Thank you for joining us. I'm Gail Hogue. And I'm Gregory Hogue. And together, we have been researching and developing sacred geometry technologies for over 36 years to support the evolving consciousness of humanity and all life on the planet. We felt the inner call to bring together a collaboration of poignant dialogues with other visionary leaders whose work we love and have followed for many years. We will explore their insights and knowledge in these conversations to bring inspiration and clarity for navigating this amazing time. As we emerge from the pattern interrupt of COVID and challenges of the past year, deep-seated inner knowing will bring us forward into something new and perhaps unpredictable. Our intent is to support you on your path forward into a life of fulfillment. We have some very penetrating interviews with this series. Each one will offer you something of extraordinary value. So stay tuned each day for the next three weeks to absorb all you can from each of these amazing people. Every program will be available for 48 hours and you can watch all the replays on Sunday. So let's get started. Let me tell you a little bit about our dear friend, Daniel Gutierrez. To get to the highest tops, one must explore the deepest depths. Nobody knows that truth better than Daniel Gutierrez. During the past 10 plus years, he has led quests to the heights of Machu Picchu, the depths of the Amazon and the tops of the Himalayas. Once a high powered executive and in-demand consultant, Daniel realized that there was more to success than a seven figure earning potential. He is now a wisdom keeper, bringing communities together with the Catalina Retreat Center in Pisac, Peru, in the Sacred Valley of Incas. One could say his journey was from the boardroom to the medicine man. People come from all over the world, virtually and in person, for an exclusive retreat and immersive experience into the Peruvian culture. Guests are invited to experience special ceremonies, traditional food, music, shamanism, Peruvian textiles, and more, all while learning the techniques and tools of radical mindfulness to stay present. Daniel provides groups and individuals a safe place to go to a deeper journey that creates lasting change in their careers, business, relationships, and personal life. And I know he's a shining example of this. A beloved mentor, intuitive coach, and sought after motivational speaker, Daniel's style of coaching is direct yet caring and stems from a place of wisdom, love, peace, and tranquility. A natural storyteller, he's a best-selling author. I'm sorry, he's a best-selling author of the book's Radical Mindfulness, Stepping into Great Greatness, and is currently writing his forthcoming book, I Want to Live Until I Die, The Agony and Ecstasy of Living Your Dreams. And you can learn more and find his website up on our Divine Symposium webpage and We'll also give you some of those links later on. So, Daniel, let's get started. What has been going on with you this the last <laughs> year and a half? <laughs> it's so good to see you. Yeah, I've actually completed two years here in Peru. Um, I got here in June of 19, 2019. Um, and then wow, we just had this. It's very interesting because I, I, I always thought that my journey to Peru was the story. And I realized during the pandemic that it was only chapter one. <laughs> there was a lot more that was going to happen over the next couple of years that would completely transform me, completely transform my life and, and put me in a position, in a, in a place that, that 
made me feel not only at home, but really connected to the people and connected to, to uh, Pachamama, to Mother Earth, which here in the Sacred Valley of the Incas, uh, we're very connected to. Um, this month is, um, is um, um, the month that we do uh, ceremony for Mother Earth. And so all month it's giving what we call un pago or a payment or a despacho uh, for Mother Earth. And so it's an exciting time. But most of all, I'm just glad to see you guys. It's been a while. <laughs> it, 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 and yet, um, you know, so much was right there ready to blossom when you moved down there. And then, wham, you got hit by the same thing as all of us. And so it shifted your life. But there was something you were kind of alluding to there that was talking about. I think a lot that you learned beyond what you expected. So what yes. were some of those gifts that happened because of the breakdown around the world? Well, I think for me, um, when I, someone asked me, why did you go to Peru? And why would you destroy everything in your past? And I did. I literally, you know, I talk about you have to burn the bridge. I used to talk about don't ever burn your bridges, that you never know when you're going to need them. What I learned here during the most difficult times of our, of our last couple of years um, was that I was asked to come here. I asked the property, the land, if I could be here through a dispatch ceremony. And I remember about 40 days into this last couple of years, uh, my employees weren't allowed to come to, to work. I was alone for about 40 days, just me and the animals. And I was mad. I was mad because I felt betrayed that, that I had done what I felt I was asked to do. I came to Peru and then everything got shut down. And, and it was very difficult for me here, here in Peru, much different than in the States. You know, I experienced what martial law is really all about you know, and military in the streets and, you know, machine guns and being harassed when I went out to get food. It was really scary for me because I, I mean, I'm not used to that, right? Um, my status, who I was, who I what, it didn't matter. All they did is I want to see a passport and where was I going and who was I and why was I here? And the interesting thing was, is that I, when I, when I came to Peru, I literally burned, gave away or sold everything I had. And that meant baby pictures, my son's baby pictures, my baby pictures, my high school books, photographs, accolades, you name it. Um, I, I, I shred it all. I shred it all. Pictures I'd painted. Um, and I thought that that was the big sacrifice, you know, for coming to Peru. And, and 40 days into it, I was very, very angry. And I remember finally deciding that I needed to, to get off social media because that's how I was connecting with everybody through social media and, and just kind of go into my own space, get into my own ceremony. And then what I heard, and this is what really changed my life. What I heard was uh, Pachimama, Mother Earth, whatever you want to call it, that, that voice that speaks to us. When you came here, you asked me if it was okay for you to be here and if this was the right move for you. And I told you, yes. And then you got here and you had people, you know, taking care of your flowers, mowing the lawn, taking care of your animals. You never once looked at me again. Now you're alone and you're upset. And the only thing I want you to do is to take care of me, the land, the way you took care of your dying mother. I want you to put your hands in the soil. I want you to touch me. I want you to connect with me the way you promised you would do. And I was in tears and I was going, could it be that simple? And I remember going outside and, and the lawn had grown up because I have no employees. And, and uh, here we don't have lawnmowers. So if you can imagine 20,000 square meters, uh, I had to mow with a, um, what do you call weed whacker? What do you call that? Uh, weed eater. 
That's what I had to mow. But I went outside. I didn't know how to use it. I had to go online to figure out how to put to put the line in. The dogs were looking at me like I was a big cartoon. You know, this guy's going to kill himself out here. But I started mowing the lawn. And I started gardening myself and I started pruning the roses and the flowers. And I really felt a connection that, that, that I hadn't felt before. Now, why was that important? Because it was one step about the bridge that, that happened. Mother nature said to me, Bachimama, you are still hanging on to Daniel, the executive, Daniel, the speaker, Daniel, this person. Your bio doesn't mean anything. That's in the past. And you're still living there. When will you live in now? You are Daniel here. And then I heard too much is given, much is expected. You need to let go. You don't live there anymore. This is your home. And when you accept that, you will have peace and tranquility. And that day I realized that I was hanging on to my bio. You know, I, I didn't want to let go just in case. And that's the day I really honestly burned that bridge. I burned that bridge because I had to. I think sometimes when we say don't burn that bridge because you mean to go over it again, it's because we, we want to retrieve. We want that retreat to go back. And so I did that. And I realized that my life was no longer in the States anymore. And it wasn't until, I'll be honest with you, this is the first symposium I've done in three, four years. I just haven't done them, you know, and, and I've connected with the people. So what happened? I made that decision that, that that Daniel had to become the new Daniel here. They call me Senor Daniel here in Peru. And I remember someone coming to my, I did have someone come to my uh, house uh, to deliver something. And I asked the two ladies, how are things going in Pizak? How are the people doing? Are they eating? Do they have money? And she says, no, the government's stealing the money. They're not giving the indigenous people what they need. The indigenous people, there's 12, tri uh, 12 tribes above Pizak. And those tribes were, fences were built so they couldn't come down. So we weren't allowed to go up, they weren't allowed to come down. And so even though they have potatoes, they didn't have uh, matches to light a fire, oil to cook with, things like that, right? And when I heard this voice, this is, a, this is all changing for me at the same time. And um, much is given, much is expected. What, what does that mean? What do I do? And then when those two girls came and told me that, I said, I got to do something. I, I have the means to do it. I'm going to do it. I don't know how. And then I was, th this is almost like a chapter out of, uh, what's the name of that book that was done in Peru that everybody knows? Um, the Celestine Prophecy. In the night, I went into to Pizak, and I met with the former mayor of Pizak. And I said, how do we help the indigenous people above? He says, well, I still have connections. I'll get you permission from the government and permission to get leave your house so you can go up in the communities. I said, I'll pay for it. How do we help these people? I had no idea there were 4,500 people up there. You know? um, and you know what? We fed and took provisions for all those families. And every day I would wake up early in the morning and I, and I would get harassed and I would get asked, why am I out? I'd have all the paperwork I needed. I had to show them that I had permission. And, and I began to build relationships with those people up in, in the mountains. Now they're my family. Now they're my friends. They check on me. They bring me food. They want to know how I'm doing. And, you know, I say all that because I think when we think about, about pursuing our dreams or pursuing joy, I think there's some, some sacrifice that comes into that. I mean, I remember so specifically what happened to you guys with the flood because it was that moment where it was like, okay, you have to be able to accept all this and boom. It's kind of like what happened to me here in Peru. It's like all of a sudden I was like, wow, now what do I do with that, right? I think that deep level of transmutation, that deep level of change that comes within our soul, what, what is the the prize on the other side. We talk about joy and peace, tranquility and transmutation, but there's something deeper than that that I've experienced. And that is every morning, just about every morning. And by the way, I, I mean, this is kind of funny because if you knew me in the States, I mean, I wouldn't walk a block without a car. And, and if I was in New York, I wanted my, my limousine. I mean, to tell you what I'm about to tell you is hilarious because my house the uh, downstairs doesn't have hot water. We don't have hot, we don't use hot water. They take cold showers here, as a matter of fact. Except in the center, we have hot water. 
But in my house, I have to go down and boil water. I have to grind the, the beans. I have to put it in a machine. I have to pour the water. And then I have coffee. Where I used to just hit a button. Everything was done. I was ready to drink coffee. But I grab my coffee and my dogs, because they sleep inside with me. And I walk my property every morning. I check on my guanacos and my alpacas and my sheep and make sure everything's okay. This is the part that I never would have expected to experience. My soul smiles from the inside out. My soul says, I am at peace. All is well with your soul. And, and that's when I know that the decision I made was the right decision. That was the right decision for me. And my wish for everybody is that some, some place in life, when we can let go of our social constructs and things that keep us in, in line, things that keep us confined, constricted, that's, that even just a glimpse of that, people will find that, that it's possible. I smile every time I walk my property and it's a deep level connection, not just to the, to, to mother earth, to Pachimama, but to myself, you know, I've said to my son and you guys know him, you know, uh, when he came to visit, I said, son, don't worry about your dad. I know I made a very drastic shift. I said, but you know, I've made peace with life and I made peace with death. I said, and I am clear that I'll take my last breath here. And it's going to be okay. And that's a lot for me to say, considering I love my son so much and I've only seen him once in two and a half years. But I did the right thing for me, right? I did the right thing for me. And so that's a little bit, I mean, it's just a little bit of what has happened these last couple of years. And that's why I say, you know, Catalina should be bankrupt. I should be bankrupt, but I'm not. And I'm still making space. I had, I had already talked to the government about changing into a hospital for COVID. I mean, I wasn't, give, I wasn't gonna give up. The, you know, I think it's something beyond dreaming. It's something beyond, it's beyond all that. It's beyond all that. And, and that very clear, distinct knowing that I'm in the right place. I know it's very difficult for my friends in the US to understand that because they knew me when, you know, I wore my $2,000 shoes and $2,000 suits. You know, now I'm walking around in dirty sweats. <laughs> and I'm happy. <laughs> that's, you know, that's really incredible. And one of the things that I want to touch on is way back at the beginning of your story, you talked about being really angry before the breakthrough, before that right. breakthrough. Yeah. And that's something that a lot of people experience when things aren't happening, you know, the way they expect them to happen. And so can you just briefly talk about who were you angry at? Where was the right. anger going? And it, it, right thing shifted, but what happened to really shift that anger? Well, it's really funny because the, what triggered the anger every day for the first 40 days of our uh, confinement here in Peru, I was putting a, a Facebook video live to let people know I was okay. I'm talking about my day, what was going on, really nothing. But I just felt that was my connection to, to the world. And then... <laughs> One day I said, I'm having a, I'm having a, a tragic uh, experience right now because I'm out of bacon. <laughs> I'm out of bacon. And somebody said, you're a horrible person for eating pigs or baby pigs or something like that. And I lost it. And that video to this day still has it's one of the most popular videos on, on my Facebook page because I f bomb the world live. I told him to go, mm -mm, mm -mm, mm -mm. and then someone writes me a note and says, Daniel, 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 you're live on Facebook. Are you really saying F you? I said, F you too. And I was like, wow, everybody was like, what that anger was about is that I had been confined and, and, and I didn't know how I was gonna get out. And I didn't know what life was gonna bring the next day. And I didn't know what, if, if I'm gonna go bust. And, and I had publicly dreamed so big that now I felt like I was gonna publicly fall on my face. 
And how was I going to deal with this? And what would become of me? And just da, 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 just going on and on. I was angry at, at, at the world. I was angry at Pachamama. I was angry at people. I was angry at the government, Peruvian government. I was angry at the whole, you know, the whole pandemic. Everything made, was just like, why, why me? And then I, and then, and this is where it's so funny. You guys are authors, people that have written books probably will appreciate this. I've written five. I'm, I'm writing my sixth. Something in my psychic said, you should try reading your own book, Radical Mindfulness. And I thought, well, I have nothing else to do. <laughs> so I started, I started reading the book. And of course, when you write a book, you don't usually go back and read it. But the steps that I had outlined in the book, I began to practice religiously. And they're very simple, but they're very powerful. You know, and, and that was just to get myself centered. Let me get myself centered. And these are the three questions that really made me realize that things were going to be okay. And then truly, my anger was about having no control. No control. Everything was happening to me, at least I thought at the time. And, and, and why is it that I was stuck in a country where I don't understand the government, I don't understand martial law, I don't understand the money, you know, I didn't have access to it. And, and food, somehow I always got wine, but food, you know. <laughs> and so this is the question that I would ask myself. These, these are the three questions. Where are my thoughts right now? Where are they? Are they in the future, the past, or the present? Where are they? And when I got myself all stirred up, I realized that I was scared and I was mad because I couldn't control the future. And, my, and, 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 and so I realized that in that moment, in that very moment, the next question that I asked myself was, Daniel, are you okay right now? Right now, you have food, yeah. You have housing, yeah. You live in paradise. You have this huge retreat to yourself. Yeah, most people are stuck in an apartment four by four, can't get out. Yeah. Okay. I'm okay right now. I'm okay right now. And that would calm me down. And then I would ask myself, are the thoughts I'm having currently real? And have they ever been real? Am I going bust? No. Was there sufficient amount of, I mean, and then I began to begin, get grateful because I began to think is what I'm doing right now, getting me closer or further to my desired outcome. All I wanted was peace and tranquility, but I could have that if I could let go of my need to control the world and get angry. If I could just, if I could just, and even by myself in the middle of Peru, in the middle of the Andes, by myself, I found peace and tranquility. I found acceptance. I found gratitude in that space. I went, you know, so what if I go bust publicly? It's another story. I'll find something else to do. But that's not what happened. What happened was I began to focus on what I could do in the moment. And what I could do in the moment was enjoy my animals, enjoy my property, mow the lawn, because it was green season. And I had to mow the lawn every day. And I mean, a lot. it took me three days to go through it once, three, four days to do it all once. And my property looked beautiful. Then the pipes would bust. <gasps> I don't know the water system here. What do I do? What do I do? I just had to make a few phone calls and people would tell me how to fix it. You know, we live in a very difficult time, but we don't have to be difficult in the process. Daniel, I, I love, I love, love this conversation. It is so, so important for this time now. And we're talking about being present. Mm -hmm. I think that's what so much of this past year and a half has pushed us into that. And, you know, the same thing happened to us when we um, had that enormous flood and almost lost everything. The mm -hmm. way to deal with it was to get present, to be here right now. It was such a remarkable learning. And we've all spent our lives since we were tiny trying to pretend that we're in control of things mm -hmm. <laughs> that's ludicrous we truly aren't and this transformational time the way that i see it is really about us moving outside of that control mechanism you know the power over that domination the, the you know trying to know how everything's going to work just fine and instead the feminine part 
of this side, which is allowing. And that's what you did. You allowed yourself to hear those voices inside. You allowed yourself to reconnect to Pachamama the way you had been drawn to do that. And that to me is one of the most important and powerful teachings of this time. So I, I so appreciate what, what your story is and what you're bringing to everyone. Thank you. I, I think for me, um, I, the message, I guess, that, that I have uh, is that the illusion of what we think we have is it, just that. It's just an illusion. But the gift um, of what we can receive when we can just relax into the knowing that, that all shall, you know, this too shall pass. And, and I know, and, and I would often say to myself, Daniel, 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 stop it. This isn't happening to you. It's happening to the whole world. You didn't do anything wrong. This is not your fault, but you do have to live through it. And if you choose, you'll be successful. And if you choose not to, that's also true. And, and I think that the message was that even, it, and I was coming up with all kinds of ways to, I mean, people here make $2 a day up in, up in the mountains, you know, and they didn't have nothing, not even that, you know, and I was like, how do, the blessing, the, 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 the silver lining, if you want to call it that, the blessing was that I had a huge online following, huge and I used that online following to help fund all the projects. I grew a garden to feed the people up in the mountains and they could come and take what they wanted. You know, I, I, I built a chapel, a, a miniature chapel with gold and everything so that people would have work. I bought chickens so I could give away eggs when they were hungry, you know, and I still do all this stuff. And that was the beauty of, of, of that. There's, there's something to do. There's something to do here. Now go back to that, too much is given, much is expected. This, this time in our, in our history didn't happen to you. It happened to all of us. That's, this is the first time we've ever experienced that as, as human beings in this time frame. We've never had the whole world have the same problem at the same time. And then I think about, you know, I talk about I want to live until I die. I want to live until I can just, I, I don't, I don't want to not, not turn over one stone. I don't know when my last day is. And, and I and my whole dear in my heart for those people who didn't know either, they're no longer with us. We don't get tomorrow, we get today. And in today, you can make choices that, that change the outcome of your future. But today is the only day we have it. I would wake up every day and just say, I'm alive, I'm not ill, I'm in good health, I have food, I have a huge online community and God bless all those people that supported the projects that I was doing. And they still are. I, I, I'm this, this December, what I, I'm, I'm hosting an event for 2,500 children with the help of the people online. They're going to support, help give these kids gifts and give them chocolate and give them bread because they don't get that here. They don't get that here. And, and that was the, that was the blessing. That was the, you want to be, a tourist in PZAC, or do you want to be part of the community? And you have much to give. So give it. Give it away without any condition of anything in return. And I did. I did. And there, there, and I want to share this one story because there's a there's a um, a saying here, or a way that the Incas lived during the times of the Incas. It's called Aini. A A Y N I Aini. Aini is me today, you tomorrow. And I never really understood that because here, what happens in, in the Sacred Valley is that when somebody is is uh, harvesting their land or planting, the whole community comes and helps them. And then when that person's time to harvest, they all go help him. When somebody gets married, the whole community comes to the marriage and supports them and buys, you know, buys everything they need to make sure that their wedding is successful. 
when when there is a, a, a death in the family, then everybody shows up. And I thought, wow, that's really cool. But I knew it intellectually. In December of last year, my reception center burned, caught on fire. I was devastated. I thought, I, you never want to say what else could happen, but I was devastated. Devastated. I remember falling on my knees. I was just crying. My staff, the people at that time had been were there. They had never seen me in that space where I was broken, broken. Obviously, this is after I had been up in the communities when they didn't have food and 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 things that they needed. And I came and gave them that. I built this online store for all the communities so they could sell their wear. I paid for their taxes. I paid for their shipping, and people were able to buy their things. So I could, and I gave them cash, and I still paid for all the all the in all the fees. And then I'm sitting there and literally broken. It's raining. My place is on fire. I don't know what I'm going to do. I'm tired. It's been a rough year. You know, there's been no income. I didn't have income for 18 months. You know, I, I didn't know what, what to think. And as I'm sitting there, um, one of the, well, finally, we got a fireman, a friend of mine to show up. And we, you know, we put the fire out before it burned everything. But the communities that I had, openly serve without any conditions began to show up one at a time. <laughs> this always chokes me up. Because they said, Senor Daniel, we're not going to let you fail. We can build that for you. This is what we do. And they quit their jobs and they came and rebuilt my entire center. And they paid for the materials and they paid for the mud and they paid for everything. And they, they rebuilt my entire my entire center. You know, and it's a beautiful thing and it's something I'll never forget, but that's just that reciprocation. I and mean, that's what that's all about. I need, I need, I need is me today, you tomorrow. And then I added the, us forever because when we can live that way, this is what this time has taught us. And I know you guys experienced that during your own tragedy, you know, and, and this is what this time is all about. It's about connecting to ourselves, connecting to each other. I didn't really understand community. I mean, I know in the States for me, it was all for one, everybody, everyone to themselves, every family to themselves, every person to themselves. And that's not the way they live here. And, and that's why I'm so in love with the people here. And, and, and they've taught me community. They taught me. I had the means. And, and today, everything I do is I turn around and give as much as I can back to the people of, of PZAC and the, and the indigenous communities above PZAC. You know, you were going through all this sharing something that was really opening up inside me is how much this is reflecting that deep understanding we have shared together for years. And that is that we're in service to all. And, you know, again, those are words that are nice in a new age community but how do you bring them into reality and that was really before you got to that end stage on your knees you realized that the way of of getting out of your own self pity was mm -hmm. to be in service to others to see others that had a need that see others that were human beings that had that same connection yes same connection to the divine that you did and so you played with the divine you mm -hmm. actually went out and doing that and you know so often i say when we're serving we're served and that's such a beautiful story Thank you, thank you, thank you. <laughs> it's changed my life, this this whole journey, and, and, and it's not been easy. But it's also been, it's not been easy, and yet it's taught me so much. I don't, I don't know that life was meant to be easy. I think life was meant to be uh, an opportunity, a tool to, to teach us how to be better people, how to be better uh, humans how to be better global citizens and and not keeping everything to ourselves. I mean, all I kept thinking it was, I can't take anything with me. I might as well give it away. 
can't take it with me. I might as well give it away. What, how much food can I eat? I have a huge garden. It's an acre garden. And, and how, how many potatoes can I eat? How much corn can I eat? How much lettuce can I eat? I always would say I'd take one out and, and my staff wants to sell it. And I said, no, I refuse to sell it. Give it away. Take it to the church. Take it to somebody who needs it. You know, Daniel, Daniel. you were the one who asked, in my experience, you know, when we first got together, asked the most penetrating and profound questions. You know, you have that gift where you just go, <laughs> right in that way and you know that you know what hit us that time right before the flood was um we were doing a program with you and the question what are uh, the statement was i am grateful for all that is coming talk about mm -hmm. losing control that was, <laughs> and we did and we we nearly i mean we lost all this land and part of our house and everything was just gone and we watched this unbelievable transformation of our land happen before that was outside of anything that I could have conjured up could not have imagined it and that's what your life is about you know that you know whether it's radical mindfulness or rad radical transformation <laughs> rad radical right. you know, burn your bridges um, <laughs> Radical is really so much of what you are. And I remember um, loving the word radical because what I learned about that word is, is it means get to the root, get to the very root of what is. And that's what you're doing here. And that's what I feel like this whole time has been, to get to the root of what's there. Who are you really? And you are a blessing, you are a guide for so many other people. And I want you to just talk a little bit about um, what you're, you're sharing with this audience as well, because there's two things. There's a, a free gift, a, um, a short meditation that mm -hmm. you're offering. And I would love you to explain a little bit about that. Um, and you have this phenomenal retreat center in Pisac. Um, if you could just speak a little bit about that and also what your other special offer is about sure. the coaching that you're offering, because I mean, you are a gift, my friend. Thank you. Uh, you know, I, um, the free gift, uh, the title of my, and this is odd because the audio was done way before the book was written, but the audio is called, um, peace and tranquility in 60 seconds. So the title of the book is called Radical Mindfulness, How to Find Peace and Tranquility in 60 Seconds. This was three, four, or five years apart. But I created this audio. I was, I was in Peru at the time, uh, sitting in front of the Pachatusan Mountains. And I was with a friend of mine called Roberto Pereira. Roberto Pereira is a uh, Grammy-winning harpist, Latin harpist. He's played for presidents. He's played for the Pope. I mean, this guy is amazing. And one day I was at his house and we were sitting in this, this rotunda thing that he has with glass and we're looking at the mountain. and said, Roberto, why don't we do a, a meditation? He said, oh, Daniel, that sounds wonderful. And I said, but I only want it to be 60 seconds. And he's like, I can't even get warmed up in 60 seconds. I said, but yeah, but the truth is that most people can't even sit at a red light, let alone meditate for 60 seconds. And my hope and my dream was that if they did 60 seconds, maybe they'd do 100, 120 and then 180, and then before they knew it, they were meditating five minutes. And so that piece is Roberto Pereira playing and me talking over the music all the same. We only did one take. That was one take. We did it, it was over, we put it up. And I, and I wanted people to kind of experience that. You see a picture when you go to get the free gift of Roberto and myself when I was a lot bigger. But um, it, it, it's a great audio and that's my gift to you. Um, Catalina Retreat Center. Catalina was my mother's name. When she passed away three years ago, I was devastated. Before she passed away, I promised her three things. One, I was going to open a center. I didn't know it was Peru, but I was going to open a center and name it after her. Two, I was going to write a book to talk about my relationship with her, which is in the book Radical Mindfulness. And three, it was to, to get healthy and lose the weight that I had at the time. And I ended up losing 50 pounds and, and getting 
into a, a body that was more comfortable. Catalina is a retreat center that has nine buildings. I have a pool, I have a yoga center, a massage center. I have a chapel, full-blown chapel. I have a restaurant, reception center, corporate center. It's huge and it's so beautiful. And, and it, when people are there, it's not a hotel. So you can't, you can't, there's not people coming in and out all day long. The doors are locked. I have security, I have uh, cameras. And, and you get to be at peace. The mountain that I sit next to is Mount Lingley. And Mount Lingley guards that part of the Sacred Valley. And across the street is Nuestra. And Nuestra is the female mountain and the, the other one. So I'm right in the middle of both mountains. And it's a very beautiful place. And I think they're going to give you my the website to the retreat center. And you're welcome to come and uh, and, and take a break. You know, I know that the world is stressed out and, and everybody's worried about a lot of things. But uh, uh, I've been blessed to have over 100 people this year already in a group coming next week, uh, next month of 2023. 20, uh, I want you to come. If it's something you want to do, you can always connect with me and we can talk about it. And in the coaching, well, why, you know, the blessing, the silver lining in all this was that I had a huge online following and, and I could ask people, you know, to do coaching or do, I wasn't doing speaking, but I did some, some Zoom stuff. Uh, but the money I made today is, really so I can continue doing my work. So I can, right now I'm doing two projects. I'm helping build a bridge where a little boy fell off. There was no bridge and, and was killed. And I promised the, the leaders of that community that I would find a way to help them build a bridge. And so I'm doing that. And then of course this, this children's thing and the coaching that I'm offering uh, is 30 days of coaching, uh, one day a week for 30 minutes. You know, we find something we want to focus on, focus on it, get you moving. My normal price for that is $19.97. I usually charge a couple thousand dollars for that. And I, I've never done this. I told Gail, I said, but I, I just feel compelled. Again, I'm always wanting to help, you know, that um, this offer during the time that they're running their uh, symposium is $197. Uh, why so low? Not because it's not valuable. I don't want you to even think that. It's because $197 goes a long ways here, a long ways. And I can do a lot with that. Now, I don't, I just got a place in my life where I don't need any extra. I don't even have a car. I've been walking for two years <laughs> because I don't want to spend the money on a car. I said, why do I need that? When I, someone can, I can go on a, uh, a bus, it costs me six soles, you know, a dollar something. And, and so I'm always looking and doing projects and, and supporting the community. And this is a way that serves the person that needs coaching and it serves the communities that I serve. And so those are the offers that, that I have right now for you. Wow. Oh my gosh. Mm -hmm. Daniel, that is, that's so generous. And, you know, Greg and I really want to come to PSAC and come to hey. Catalina. And we will, we will. I when the time is right for everybody, they'll show up. Yeah. That's the way I feel about it. Yeah, it, it's a little hard to travel yet with, you know, yeah. all the disease that's still going on around. Right. However, know that we will do that. And um, the generosity of your soul and, you know, you are truly, you're, you're truly a guide. And, um, and you are, you didn't really speak to this, but you are a shaman. And, you know, Thank you. and you are not just playing being a shaman you are living it with yeah. all of what you've been through and what you're doing and um and what you will be doing and i know that you are just working on so many so many divine levels and working with our good friend metatron as well right daniel that's right yeah metatron yeah so um, the information about Daniel's gifts are up on his page. Um, we really suggest that you take advantage of it. And if you are called to a spectacular journey, like what Daniel is offering at Catalina, um, check it out and check out his work. He is just a gift to so many of us and certainly to the people of Peru, uh, just uh, the indigenous people. What a gift you are to those beautiful, beautiful souls. And I know that they're a gift to your soul as well. Yes, they are. Um, I, I just um, 
you're you're a treasure. You truly are. Thank you. And I appreciate this time to connect with you guys and all of you that are watching and look forward to speaking to as many of you as I can. Yeah. So do you want to say something else, Gregory? Uh, I know you're you're very busy today, and so thank you for your time. But especially thank you for your heart. Because, you. you know, it, it just in, in a in a final word. What do you think that this pandemic, the whole world has gone through it, is going through it, and what is a step that's new for humanity that you feel we've been catapulted into by going through this, this whole thing that we've all gone through? What is the yeah. next step? I think that the opportunity was for us to look in the mirror and to see what kind of people we really were, to see who we were from the inside out instead of the outside in, to really challenge our own social constructs, to really challenge our systems, but most of all, to take a good look at who we were as human beings. And that, that is, that is the, the thing that I think we as a, as a, as a, global community need to look at the word community and really begin to take care of each other, really begin to take care of our, the Amazon forest, really begin to take care of things because we were just taught that mother nature doesn't need us. We're guests here. And in a moments, moments in a blink of an eye, it could start all over again. And I think that we just really need to make sure that we're, Think about that. Think about that phrase I said. I want to live until I die. I want to live until I die. And if we can do that every day, then we'll do good things and we'll be good people and we'll support each other. And in doing so, we'll become a better earth. And then we won't have to worry about things like this again. But that's the challenge for the human race. That's the challenge for us all, not just us in the US, the whole world. That's the challenge for us all. And this is just not for for uh, hippies and you know the spiritual people, this is this affected everybody from Wall Street down to the to the indigenous people of Peru. It's time to wake up. Indeed. Indeed. So, thank you for thank you guys on Love such you. a beautiful note, and um, look forward to connecting with you again. You Sometime bet. soon. I right, love you guys. Good to see you. Thank you. Bye. Bye, Daniel. Love Lots you. of love. Love you. Thank you for watching and being a part of the Divine Paradigm co-creation. The time has come for us to work together in co-creative ways with the outcome being greater than any of us could have achieved alone. You make a difference in this important time. So thank you so much. We want to let you know tomorrow, there will be another amazing conversation with one of the heartfelt thought leaders who've chosen to be a part of this symposium. Each program is available for 48 hours and all of them can be replayed on Sundays. You'll be receiving an email in your inbox that will take you to the next conversation. So make sure you're getting our emails. Please stay with us and stay tuned. We're going to have a lot of fun with some powerful messages. The full program takes place six days a week, Monday through Saturday for three weeks. And the full program will also be available at the end for purchase. Keep checking back to the page to enjoy our next conversation. Blessings and, and love. love.